Okay, we're taking a step back. Yeah, Waterloo's done, but second court doesn't know it. They arrived a little after four. It's about 5.30 and they are approaching Quatre Bras, where Van Damme with his diminished core and all the heavy cavalry, uh, Kellerman and Exelman have been set to ambush him. Let's see what happens. Let's take it to the table. Greetings. It is 5.15 and the British Second Corps are approaching the west side of Quatre Bras. Represented by this built up area here, this built up area here, and this built up area right here. But Van Damme has a nasty ambush prepared for him. Uh, here's Van Damme. He has uh, line infantry in this built up area and his artillery ready to pop out and shoot. He has line infantry in this built up area. And he has a grenadier unit hiding in the woods alongside with Kellerman's Carassier and their horse artillery. Behind this built up area is Exelman's horse artillery ready to pop out and Exelman's heavy dragoons having sustained one unit casualties from the big uh, Karmish, uh, cavalry skirmish um, cavalry battle uh, in the earlier part of the Waterloo fight and they're going to move along here and try to flank the British forces. So when they get a little closer, Van Damme will issue his first signal, which means everybody pop out and start shooting, and all his troops will shoot or advance, except for, uh, the Carassier will stay in the forest, and then I'm going to give the English uh, a roll. On a one, they're going to surrender. On a two, three, or four, they're going to run into the woods to get away from the heavy dragoons and the artillery fire. On a five or a six, they're going to stand in the open and fight. So we're going to take it forward a, uh, about 15 minutes, maybe 30, and see what happens. We'll be right back. All right. The French have made their move. The English have taken four casualties, but have rolled to stand and fight in the open. They have formed a battle line here with a militia unit uh, trying to support the flank, which is about to be overrun by the heavy dragoons. And now, and the artillery is shooting, supported by a militia unit. Now, uh, Van Damme will issue his second signal for the Carassier and the Grenadiers to advance. And the British will be pinned between two cavalry forces and the infantry and artillery at Quatre Bras. So, let's see where it goes from there. Okay, it's looking very bad for the English. The line here tried to attack this built up area and failed. This uh, militia was heading for the guns and this militia was supporting this artillery here. But the English have lost two units, a British line and a militia. The Carassier have come out of the forest with Keller Kellerman attached and are attacking the last English line unit. One heavy dragoon 
is uh, a attacking the militia here. And three heavy dragoons are attacking the artillery here with the grenadiers attacking the militia here. So, we'll see what the results of this melee are. And we'll find out if Lord Hill died or not. We'll be right back. Okay, the British guns managed to drive off the heavy dragoons and uh, Exumen survived. The grenadiers and uh, militia pushed each other back, but in the center the cuirassier destroyed the British uh, line infantry there and pursued on to help the heavy dragoons uh, fight the militia unit that was there, which was also destroyed. Uh, unfortunately, Lord Hill died supporting the attack on the built-up area. Now the British have lost four units, so they break, and they will suffer massive uh, pursuit, so all units will be at, at the maximum of five hit points. Uh, that is the end of the fight of Second Corps at Quatre Bras. The British have been destroyed, and the campaign is basically over. We will come back with a synopsis and uh, an analysis of casualties uh, of the Waterloo campaign. Okay, be back in a bit. Okay, welcome back. Uh, just a synopsis, post-mortem on the whole Waterloo campaign. Um, using the Grand Tactical Map and Movement uh, gave a totally different uh, aspect to the game, uh, a totally different level to the game. We hadn't done that before. And it allowed Napoleon to do what he meant to do, which was to divide a force that was twice his size and try to ki kill it piecemeal. So, right, right wing with Napoleon and Grouchy were able to destroy three Prussian corps uh, and keep them out of the battle. Left wing with Ney was able to isolate second corps, which had to go off the map, come back, on another road and never made it to the Waterloo battle as you saw but got uh, got uh, butchered at uh, around 5 6 p.m. Waterloo lasted from about 1 30 maybe earlier to about 7 p.m. Uh, the French definitely had the advantage in the battle uh, with the surrender of Picton and the exclusion of Second Corps and half the Prussian army. Uh, they didn't have much of a chance. Uh, they got very unlucky with the die roll and uh, it ended with an unconditional surrender, which means France now has a peace treaty with Prussia. They have a peace treaty with uh, England for six months for both. and. Also, as important, they uh, have annexed Brussels. The Netherlands are now an ally uh, vassal state of France. Napoleon got a lot of loot from the unconditional surrender. He got 
uh, several artillery batteries. He got horses from all the cavalry, from the allies. He got lots and lots of muskets, all of which are worth points in the game that you could use to buy other troops with or equip troops. And he got about uh, he got about uh, twelve uh, Netherland units, formerly working for the English, now working for France. So. Uh, a big win for Napoleon. Um, would I use the Grand Tactical map again? Maybe not. It, it worked perfectly in this case because he was trying to uh, drive a wedge between two forces and destroy them piecemeal. Uh, on further battles, we may just do a pickup battle that is a set battle. Maybe with a rival or not, but it'll just be uh, a 3 by 4 table, not using Grand Tactical Movement. Unless, of course, there's another situation where Napoleon or somebody is trying to outmaneuver their opponent and uh, destroy them piecemeal. So, uh, great victory for the French. Uh, the, the Prussians have a long walk home. They got a little bit of baggage to, uh, to feed them for a while, but not long. Uh, the British are basically back in England within a week. Uh, and the next episode will be episode 14 as the French, as Napoleon turns to meet the two oncoming Russian columns that are just at the French border. Until then, keep gaining.